Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Kenna and today I'm going to be showing you my entire Skindapsis collection and also talking a little bit about how I care for them. I've had a lot of people ask me how I take care of my Skindapsis. So I thought I would just put it all in a video and do a little collection video of all of the Skindapsis that I do have. Skindapsis are um, one of my favorite plants for sure. And I have found that they're kind of hard to find in my area. Not a lot of people are really into them. So as far as like uncommon Skindapsis go, um, I've had to resort to finding them online or there are a couple people in my area that do collect them and so I've got a couple from them. But in my experience, Skindapsis do not import very well at all. Um, you can let me know if you've had a good experience in the comments, but everyone that I know that has tried to import Skindapsis have not had very good luck. So I think that might be another reason why they're um, a little bit more uncommon and maybe hard to find in your area. So the first one is my Skindapsis Silver Hero. And this one is definitely one of my favorites. It's one of the more unique ones. It doesn't really look like any other Skindapsis that I have. And I have taken a couple cuttings of this, so it was much bigger in the beginning. But I love the leaves like this that are super dark. And oh, I just, I really, really like this plant. And I will talk a little bit about this. Um, so Skindapsis do this a lot. And I currently, sadly, have not found a way to get them to not do that other than putting them in like the most ideal conditions that you can. Um, I will say that I've had really good luck chopping up the parts that, um, like the skipped nodes and putting them in a prop box and growing them from nodes and then adding them back to the pot to make it fuller. So I might make a whole video on that at some point because I know a lot of people have that problem and I have that problem. So this one started to do it when I moved it out of like um, high humidity. So I would say that definitely keeping them in high humidity and high light will help reduce um, this right here. Cause I know that's kind of a bummer. The next one is my Skindapsis Pix Bull. Skindapsis pictus argirius and this one I also chopped way up so it was much bigger but this has always I've had this one for a really long time this was one of my first Skindapsis and um, like I said it was trailing and I wanted it to fit in my wicker cabinet so I chopped it all up but this one is very unique and it looks a lot like um, the next one which is my Skindapsis Silvery Ann. They look a lot alike, but this one has more. Let's see if I can do this. This one has more silver around the edges, and this one has it in the middle. This is dangling on Tux's head. Oh my gosh, I just spilled water everywhere. Anyway, so the Skindapsis pictus argirius has become a lot more common, and I've seen these a lot in like big box stores. So if this is one that you are looking for, I think it's a lot easier to find now than it used to be. Um, this one is starting to yellow a little bit and that is a sign that it needs repotted because I'll show you guys how bad this plant needs repotted. Do not judge me. So if your skindapsis are yellowing, that is a good sign that they're either being overwatered or they need to be repotted and skindapsis do not like to be root bound. I learned that the hard way with a lot of my Skindapsis, but I think that is really important to keep them up potted and they will grow a lot better if you do that. Okay, moving on to this giant dude. This is my Silvery Anne, and this is also one that I think has become, yellow leaf, has become a lot easier to find. Um, I got this one at a local um, greenhouse so I think that you can find them. I'm not really sure, but they do look a lot like the Argerius, but when you give them really high light, um, they do develop more of the silver around the edges. Mine is not in high light. It's on top of my fabric core in my bedroom and it doesn't get very much light at all. That's why it looks like this. So I might use this one as an example if I chop up all the nodes and 
propagate them for you guys. Let me know if that would be something you would like to see in the future. Um, so yeah, this is my Skindapsis Silvery Ann. Okay, the next one is my Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. And this is an original Skindapsis. I feel like if anyone has Skindapsis, it's this one for the most part. Um, I love the giant leaves on this plant. Like the leaves get so, so big. Um, mine is kind of struggling right now. I said that in a um, previous video and I think it's because I've moved it around my house a lot and it's just not happy. So I might try to move it um, and see what happens, but we're getting a lot of empty nodes, like I said. So this one needs to be chopped and propped or I need to buy another one and add it to the pot because it's not very full, but if you are wanting to get into Skindapsis and you're not already, this is a good one. I think they're overall pretty easy. I think Skindapsis in general are not the easiest plant variety. Um, they're not like a philodendron or a Hoya. They're, they're a little bit more finicky, but if you're really into them like I am, I put in more time for my Skindapsis and I just know that I need to put in more time for them and I can't neglect them as much as I can my other plants. But they really are beautiful plants and the leaves are just so unique. The next one is one I've talked about a lot on my channel and this is my Skindapsis Silver Cloud and this leaf is massive. Like it is as big as it looks. It's bigger than it looks on camera. And um, the reason I got this giant leaf is because this plant was struggling really bad and I said that in a previous video, I don't remember which one, but it gave me this weird leaf. And then I put it in a Ziploc bag and with really high humidity and really high light, it gave me this leaf and I just transitioned it into my Mills bow. So I was expecting for it to not grow for a little bit, but we do have a new leaf coming in. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. But I think I got this one from Ivy Plant Shop and I have an unboxing I'll have linked up in the little clickable eye so you guys can check that out if you want. But she has a really cool Skindapsis. You're, you're okay. She has really cool Skindapsis if you are into like uncommon Skindapsis. I would definitely check her out. I will have her um, shop linked in the description also. But I unboxed this one a while back on my channel and it struggled for a hot minute, but it's coming back and it's such a beautiful one. Next one is also one that I just chopped up, so it's small, but the new leaf is so pretty. That is my Skindapsis Silver Lady. And we are getting a new leaf, which is so exciting. This one put out a runner for me. And so I chopped it up and propagated them and I ended up getting like five different plants out of the nodes, so that's exciting. Um, but then it immediately put out a new leaf, which is another reason why I like to cut up my Skindapsis. I found that if you cut the runner off, they will put out new leaves and will stop putting out runners, in my experience. So if your Skindapsis has a runner, I would try to cut it off at the base and see if it will grow back a leaf. But this one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I love when they do this, like the new leaves, and they have more silver with like the little dark splotches. I think that's so pretty. But this one is also, it was very uncommon when I got it, but it's, I think it's becoming more available on like Facebook, buy, sell, trade groups, and things like that. The last Skindapsis I have is probably my most uncommon one, and it is a Skindapsis Silver Princess. And this one is also one of my favorites, but I've also kind of had a love-hate relationship with this one. It was really hard to get growing. I bought this as a single leaf cutting and it was unrooted and it took me a while to get it rooted and growing, but I also chopped up the runner on this one and that is how I got so many different nodes coming off of this one plant. So it is finally growing good and I actually just took a cutting of it. So hopefully it will start growing again, but this is a really cool one. And this one you might have to find online because they're a little bit more uncommon. So I kind of went over care for them as I went through my collection, but overall I think Skindapsis just need high light, um, 
High humidity is definitely preferred. I found that mine do a lot better in high humidity, but you don't have to give them high humidity. I have my more common ones just in my house and they're doing just fine. So um, if, you're, if your skin dioxys is struggling, I suggest trying to put it in like a greenhouse environment. Um, and like I said, they do not like to be root bound. So I suggest that um, you should repot them when you can start to see roots coming out the bottom pretty fast or they will start to get yellow leaves. And then on my skin dapsis, I also try not to let them dry out. When you do let them dry out, they will kind of curl their leaves. And that's a good sign that you definitely need to water them, but I try not to let mine get to that point. My Exotica does that a lot more than any of my other ones. Um, so I definitely recommend keeping the soil not sopping wet, but I don't let them dry out completely in between waterings. I found that when I do that, I lose more leaves and it causes a little bit more stress to the plant. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing my Skindopsis collection and I hope you learned something about how to care for Skindopsis. Those are just a few tips and tricks that have worked for me and my collection. Let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions for Skindopsis and which ones are your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.